Simon Mauter channel. Welcome right today for the first time ever on this channel. I'm making a video specifically about bezel setting and I haven't bothered doing bezel setting videos before because all other YouTube channels about making jewellery are just bezel set non-stop so I don't bother making the video. I feel like I don't need to like everyone else is doing it. So anyway I've got a trick up my sleeve. I'm going to show you three different ways you can make a bezel setting for really small stones I'm sort of thinking of. Uh, anyway, we'll get into it. After I said thank you to a new patron, we got Victoria Payne. Thank you very much, Victoria. I like your style. Victoria gets a, a shout out, personal thank you to me on the channel. She gets access to the full instructional guides and she gets to see a kitten. Yee <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So bezel settings or rub over style collets. I think I just mentioned I've got smaller size stones in mind for these little techniques I'm going to show you on making collets for them. So I guess around about four mil, five mil and up, I'm going to show you how I would make a collet for those size stones first. So this is a five mil stone, just over perhaps, no, five mil. Um, yeah, five mil, perhaps four mil, I would do this same thing for. Uh, basically making a, curling it up into like a little straight sided barrel. It's got to be a specific size so the stone can so you can cut the edge away and the stone can drop down into it and then you've got a decent kind of wall around the outside that'll be your setting edge it needs to be strong so i would start off if you've been milling out a bit of wire um like this side cut off and filed flat this side you know when you mill out metal you've got that bit that's kind of no good it's all a bit wonky i leave that on there when i start curling because that's a good little extra bit of length to hold on to so what I do is, I'm going to make this video quick, I'm not going to go in crazy detail. I sort of start it off what I think is sort of correct without really thinking too much about it. So I just do a little bit of a, a curve first and I'll check the stone against it. I was like, okay, I need to turn it a little bit tighter. That's sort of what I expected. Obviously where you hold that in your pliers makes a difference on how tight you can curl it. So I was about there and go down a little bit. Still holding it right on the end. I mean, just check it. You can't really over check it. All right, so I think if I continue that curve, it should be about right. Do a bit more, I'm trying to keep it round, but it's not massively important. Just kind of round is okay. If it's a little bit egg shape or a little bit wonky, that's all right. So yeah, checking again, looking at the girdle on my stone and checking the curvature against that. When it's still open, I might curve it a bit more. But before I close it right up, I will now cut off that bad bit, just because it's easier to do. So it's just the way I work, but I prefer cutting it off now rather than wrapping it over and then cutting through two walls. I just find that a bit more of a liability, a bit more of a risk to cutting it a bit wrong. Because uh, you've got to be quite specific about the size. You don't want to, want to waste metal and you don't want to, certainly don't want to make it too small accidentally. Then you've got to start again. Um, so yeah, I just cut it off now and I nearly always choose parallel pliers for this just because they they grip things really tight, you can hold on things tighter and they're far less likely to slip off. These kind of pliers, you could do the job, it's alright, um, because they don't open, they're open like that, like scissors, they're sort of gripping more the bottom half so it's more likely to be able to move, so you're more likely to cut it wrong, you're more likely to break your saw blade, also more likely they're going to slip off and when they do, they don't just slip off like that they gouge the corner so a bit of a liability so I just find it safer to use parallels like squeeze that really hard doesn't move so less likely to break my saw blade it's just cutting off that end bit they're not perfect things do still move about in parallel pliers but slow down and go gently the last little bit as well because the saw blade always goes through you don't want to end up putting a nick in your metal like pretty good um, so be careful where you cut it from you don't want to if I cut it right there uh, that last little bit needs sort of bending and pushing down in position that's gonna make it a bit too big this curve is actually quite nice for my stone so I can actually get away with cutting it back here a little bit so I might cut it there 
choose carefully where and how you cut it because i say where because you don't want it too small you need it a little bit too big literally cut it too big on purpose because then you've got to close it up and then it's nice to put a uh, put your saw blade through the join and then that closes up a little bit reduces it and makes the join really tight and nice um also i say like be careful how you do it because you want to go straight down if you start cutting off at a bit of an angle you've then got to uh, match the ends up again so you'll have to file it back and then you're risking making it too small obviously this is just a parallel sided little collet if you're worried about jumping through and then hitting the bottom of your collet you can actually put your saw blade on the inside and then cut cut to the outside that's a, a little bit safer again like i say you didn't you rarely make them perfectly round by hand but we've got the tools like all the collet punches and stuff to put it in so that does a lot of the work for you but it pays to get it kind of round because you want to you work into the size of the stone so if it's completely off round, it's likely you're gonna get it wrong. Okay, so there's mine. Like, not perfectly round. I haven't cut through the join or anything. I've just basically turned up with pliers and touched the ends. It's good enough, so I can check the stone on it. Check the size of the stone. And uh, yeah, it's just right. It's just a bit too big. It just sort of goes in there. I want it more on the edge there. So it can sit on a, a nice shelf and then also have a decent amount of wall thickness to push over the stone. So if I cut through that join once, perhaps twice and after rounding off it should be good for the stone and that's all I needed to do I want to get the ends lined up obviously they can't be out of line out of alignment as well you got a sometimes if your collet scissors a little bit which is common on a very small amount two pairs of parallels I do recommend you have two pairs of parallels you can just wiggle it side to side and get it right now before you tap it around you've got to solder it up so um, I'm going to cut through my join, make sure that's tight as possible. Mine's pretty good, but I want to, I want to cut through it anyway because it's too big. Also, another top tip to eliminate a risk of damaging it as your saw blade goes through. Uh, hold it with parallel pliers underneath, directly underneath your join and cut straight down. And that way when it goes through, your saw blade is going to bang against your pliers. If you hold it on the side, it'll go through and your saw blade might bang underneath. I I've got experience and I know that can happen, so I work with that. Um, knowing that's going to happen so I work really carefully on that last little bit slowing down but yeah if you're new to making jewellery and you haven't made that mistake of damaging a collet and then having to start again <laughs> uh, just hold it like this it saves you a bit of trouble there you go but even with your pliers underneath don't just cut into it really fast you've got to work a bit carefully making sure you're going straight over your join and straight down because if you start accidentally cutting a little bit like this or looking down on it cutting slightly like that uh, your join might not be very nice anymore and then you have to sort of work on the ends and close it up a little bit more the collet's getting smaller every time you do that so i've made it a specific size for the stone and i've included having it too big to cut through it to get the join tight so uh, if i have to start working on the join doing extra work and making it smaller i've kind of getting into trouble because once you start accidentally making things too small and then trying to punch up the size in collets and collet punches and that mm, this is a bit like what i've said in the past call i call it going backwards and forwards it's like you're causing problems for yourself and then having to repair it as you go along it's not a quality way to make jewelry so anyway that join is tight now let's check it on the stone so there's my collet bit of a flat spot there it's okay it's round enough to check the size what do you think that perhaps right looks a little bit too big I could cut through it once more but this is all plier marks and stuff around the edge of this collet I reckon if I solder that up and then just give it a tap in the collet punch if you're new to making jewelry let me just show you all the tools I'm going to use uh, I can tap it down like in there in there and then that will round it off and just push in that outer lip a little bit I think it's going to be just right so another thing I want to mention uh, as well as going too big with your collet and then you've got space to work on the join get it really tight and reduce it a little bit you should i should have mentioned at the start start with a bit of metal a strip of metal slightly too thick either correct or slightly too thick is better because we're gonna you get using your pliers on it a lot you're putting little dents and wobbles on it uh so after i've banged it around soldered it tapped it in there i then got a maybe use a file over the solder join if there's a bit of a bump there and we're going to be papered around the outside and be polished it all takes 
a little bit off the surface of the dimensions. So um, yeah, I, I recommend always starting with slightly too heavy, slightly too long. Helps you out, gives you a bit of room for maneuvering. So when I'm soldering up collets, I like to put pressure on either side of the join. I do that by squeezing it in tweezers. So I would like to hold it, clamping it closed with tweezers, but in silver, because the whole thing, silver conducts heat so much, the whole thing has to get hot for a solder to flood. It's a bit of a liability because silver gets so soft, any sort of pressure, the join might do that, might squash out of alignment a little bit. So I'm just going to put it down, but it's not my favourite thing to do, but I'm just going to put it down and add a little bit of solder on the end. So you're making a collet, it's going to be joined to another piece of jewellery you're making. It's probably an idea to use hard solder. Might help you out at later stages of making your piece, whatever you're making. It's probably preferable to have a smaller bit of solder than too big, because uh, you end up with a big lump there, just more work to do. Well, it's difficult, you just learn from experience. Sometimes you use too much on purpose, sometimes you use almost too little. Put that on right over the join. You want to check your join flooded on top it's gone down the outside gone down the inside always worth a look you should have a you should, should be able to see the solder gone all the way around it so people who've seen my videos in the past will confirm that i always go on about having a tight join but it's such a benefit like my join was good so it just used a, i used just used a small bit of solder flooded first time easily where i wanted it to go so that's a as strong as possible neat as possible uh, i've saved time i've saved money so i wasn't constantly adding solder to fill up gaps um, that takes the minimum amount of effort to clean up now. There's not as hardly a lump there down the join, so I could probably just go straight to the paper wizards. So I've saved money, I've saved time, getting on with it. It's a higher quality, more well-made piece. So tight joins is the way to go. I'll show you a close-up of my join. I just took this collet out of the acid. So you can see I put the blob on top. It ran down, nice straight line, not too much of a lump there. So minimum amount to clean up. And you've got to check the inside as well. See that? similar story on the inside so yeah the minimum amount of time the minimum minimum amount of cleanup involved and then as strong as possible so i'm about to put it in the collet punch you want to get any kind of lump lumpiness off the outside otherwise the punch can't really do its job properly i'm just going to flatten one side as well some of the door Just that, just to get it going. I'm going to put that on my collet punch now. So there might be a bit of an illusion going on because that inner edge hasn't been punched out, so that might be a little bit wobbly still, but the outer should be good. And that's about what I'd like. I need to cut out, let's see if I can tilt that. That's about like what I'd like. I like a nice strong setting edge that can be set neatly and uh, it just looks like a nicely finished thing. And there's also a decent amount to cut out the inside as well. So that sits on a, a strong shelf, supported all the way around nicely. Also got a strong edge pushed over it. And also there's still plenty of metal there for setting and cleaning up around the outside because that would need like pe perhaps a light file and then papering around the outside as well. Okay, four mil, sorry, under four mil stones. I'll tell you what we do, very complicated. So this is a three mil, I think. Very complicated, I'll show you what you do. You, uh, you get a bit tube, yeah, that's slightly bigger diameter than your stone. So you've got that bit of a wall around it. And then you just cut it off the depth you want. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so I might have said that sounding like I'm making fun, but I'm really not, like I've done this in the past a few times. Uh, you just get a bit of chenille, a bit of tube, and you can cut off little sections. The only thing to watch out for, as far as I'm aware, when you buy in this tube, it's nearly always, well, it's always hard alloy metal. So it might be a bit springy when you're setting. It's, it's precious metal. It's a thin little bit of metal, really. You shouldn't have trouble with it. Another thing to watch out for, it's, uh, you can, 
I would recommend if you want to do this in the future, like you've got to make loads of collets for three mil stones. It's a good way to go about it. But I would buy, get some four mil tube the, with the thickest wall possible, because I think you can order it different thickness walls. Yeah, get four mil, thick wall, and then just pull it down in your draw plates to get what you need. Because uh, because that wall's a bit thin, you've got to be really specific with your sizes. It's got to be just right for that stone to sit on and be able to cut out the inside so it sits down and then have a set-in wall as well. Uh, but yeah, it can help you out a lot having spare bits of tube in your box. And the third way to make these collets, this will be suitable for two mil, one mil stones, if you can really rub set a, a one mil stone. Um, you can get a bit of wire. If you haven't got tube, this would work for that last stage as well. If you haven't got a bit of tube, uh, if you've got a thick bit of round wire, there's no reason. There's no reason why you can't just flatten the end, get a ball burr. This is, this is what I would do. Well, it helps if you've got a sharp one. I'd probably phrase it out to the diameter I like. Keep it in the middle. This is way harder than normal because this ball burr is not cut in. This is going in the bin after this video. Um, yeah, I'd get that. So you can check the stone on it, you like the size, and then I'd just drill it out. Just get a drill. Get a drill, drill it out. Obviously leave it, if you're doing this, leave it as long as possible. Don't cut it off first and then start trying to work on a fiddly little bit of metal. Just leave it long and just basically make your own tube like that. So just for the purposes of demonstration, if that was actually something setting, I would phrase it or drill it out more. So it's a thinner, thinner wall there. But just for demonstration, you are essentially just making your own bit of tube. There you go, just keep working with your stone. That stone's too big for this bit of wire, by the way, but I hope you understand what I'm... I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. So I hope this video was useful to you and um, thanks for watching.